Yes, you know? And the other one, here's another here. Here's your, here's your one here. Okay. Yeah. Hello, this is you. Good morning. We are 20 children, all on the 12th, attend a day.
team. Player coach Simone Edwards' team is rich with talent, but lacking the resources necessary to compete at the game's highest level. We caught up with Simone at a recent workout with the team and spoke to her about the challenges her squad is facing, not unlike those of the Jamaican bobsled team. I am from Kingston, Jamaica. I grew up in a small community called Goldsmith Villa. I grew up with my mom and three brothers. It was a tough community. At a young age, I discovered two bodies, you know, because uh, I used to go to the dumpsters to get books to read, and um, we discovered, as kids, two dead bodies over there. Uh, so, you know, childhood, as much as my mom tried, uh, you know, to take care of us kids, four kids on her own, I went without a lot of things, but I was so loved. I appreciated her for everything she did. All I can remember is my mom crying. I just remember her crying. It was a two bedroom, me and my brothers over one, my mom next door, because she didn't have shoes to give me. Even when I was training for basketball, a lot of time, it's outside, I was barefooted, because I didn't have, I couldn't afford a basketball shoe. And before I even left Jamaica, I remember just praying and said, God, if you help me out, help me to be successful, I'll give back. Simone has built a community centre in her hometown and through her charity Simone for Children she often speaks to school children in Jamaica about her story using adversity as motivation to achieve their dreams. What I'm telling you is that at the start everything is going to be hard even with your schoolwork. When you start some math it's going to get hard. You know it's going to seem hard but as you keep practicing it you're going to get better at it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Everything for me, it's, I don't know, that motivation is just from where I grew up and just wanted to make my mom proud and want to make a difference. And I always tell young ladies I'm working with that it's a skill game. If I didn't go into gym and spend those time shooting or working on my game, if I didn't want to make it, I wouldn't have because there were so many obstacles in front of me, even from when I was young growing up that, you know, walls that I keep running into, but for some reason, I just feel there's a mission out there to accomplish, and that's why I take on the national team. Uh, I just feel like with everything that's going wrong, I can make a difference, I can change it. Simone's leadership style has had a positive impact on her players and staff, creating a family-like atmosphere that helps keep the team together. We have been like a sisterhood, honestly. Like, Simi's like my big sister. She's our captain, but she's so much more to me. and the life. He that believeth in me, though ye were dead, yet shall ye live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. 
I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, and I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This morning, we gather here to celebrate the life of our beloved Simone Edwards. Let me take this time to extend condolences to the bereaved family. And we are confident that God is able to comfort, to strengthen, and to guide you as you go through this time of bereavement. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come this morning to celebrate the life of one that is, has lived, one that is loved, and one that has contributed much to this sport. And so, Father, as we come to celebrate and to give you thanks, we commit this proceeding to you. We commit every aspect of the service to you. And we pray that, Lord, whatever will be said and done, we pray that it will be done to your glory, to your honor, and your praise. So we ask that you lead even now as we look to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. At this time, we'll now have a song of praise, a waymaker, and so we invite the singers to come.
may be seated. So this morning's service of Thanksgiving, our moderator will be the Honorable Michael Fennell, and now invite him to come to the lectern as he will lead us through the rest of the service. Thank you very much, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's very nice and thankful for all of you to attend this special celebration of the life of our dear friend Simone. May I also welcome those who are joining us through the streaming service and television uh, and the wider audience. Uh, we welcome them and thank them very much for linking with us this morning for this very important occasion. Let me, in the welcome, ask you to address a few special persons that are here. Um, we're all here on equal terms, but I think you'll agree that we need to welcome some special people. The first is Simone's mother and father, Beryl and Aston Edwards. May I ask you to welcome them there, who are here? Then we are distinguished by the presence of our minister responsible for sport, her Excellency, the Honourable, the Honourable Babsy Grange, Olivia Grange. Welcome, Minister Grange. And I, this is not in the script, but I must let you know that when Patsy approached her, she pulled out all stops from her ministry to get this function going. And I think they would like the right up front minister to thank you very much for the way you've responded and helped to organise this celebration here today. We also welcome Minister Edmund Bartlett, Minister of Tourism, and I could make a few other comments, but I, this is a church service, so I won't Minister Bartlett. But thank you very much for being here. I think you know how important the person we are honouring today has been to the sports tourism product. We also have the Brazilian ambassador with us, and Your Excellency, I welcome you on behalf of the family and the organizers and the other dignitaries that have accompanied you. We also have the President of the Jamaica Olympic Association, Mr. Christopher Samuto, and the President of the Jamaica Basketball Association, Mr. Paulton Gordon. We have other members of the sports community, some athletes, some players in other sports, and generally a very wide cross-section of people who are here to celebrate with us today. On behalf of the organizers of this event, I welcome you all. Dear friends, you have a copy of the program, and my role as moderator is just to assist you in going through the program expeditiously. However, allow me just to say a few words up front. I think those of us who go to funerals know that we have conflicting emotions. Obviously, we are saddened by the passing and we are still in a state of mourning, but we are also celebrating the life of the person who has passed on. And this function today is in a mode of a celebration of the life of Simone Edwards. And the contributions and so on is really celebrating an amazing life by an amazing woman, an amazing Jamaican. For those of you who may not know Simone, the, Simone, the various presenters will give you something about her life. But allow me right up front to tell you of my own personal involvement with her. At the time when I was president of the Jamaica Olympic Association, because she was a person after being very distinguished in the USA, in the basketball professional series up there, without hesitation came back and said she wanted to contribute to the revival and the uplifting of basketball in Jamaica, and in particular women's basketball. She did this with commitment and with passion, to the extent, and I'm not sure that this will be seen, but let me mention it, in 2006, she led the basketball team as a part of the Jamaican team to the Central American Caribbean Games in Cartagena, Colombia. In those games, they were on the medal podium, and it qualified them for the Pan American Games, which was held in Cali, in 
Rio Brazil, Rio de Janeiro Brazil in 2007. She not just led the team and played with them, but she was a great inspiration to them because the women's basketball had been in the background for a long time. They won the Caribbean championships and she came and lifted them to new heights. Her dedication was quite clear. You could not disguise it. And that was just a small example of her contribution, not the full contribution. So it's with a certain amount of sentiment that I am here as a moderator this morning to celebrate the life of Simone and to say it would be nice, even great, if all persons who are blessed with special talents use those talents not only for themselves but for other people. And Simone was certainly an example of that. She had talents, the talents were developed, she was successful and she used those talents for herself but equally for others that she inspired and helped with her training. So I would now like to move on to the next item on the program and we'll have a scripture reading and this will be by Angelie Johnson. But before doing that, I omitted to introduce properly the pastor who is leading this um, event today. He is Pastor Dr. Owen de Goots. He is from the, um, the uh, Duhaney Park Gospel Assembly and has assisted with the organization every step of the way. He has been extremely helpful to Patsy and the rest of the group in guiding us not to break rules as far as we are operating. Also assisting him will be Elder Leroy Stamp. Now if you look in the program, his name is not correctly spelled. It should be Leroy Stamp, and he insisted, might I say, there are two P's at the end of it, S-T-A-M-P-P, -P. so it's a, there's an error in the program. But we welcome Elroy Stamp, who is from the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and he is, um, I think, the, uh, the elder at the Elton Goldsmith, Elton Goldsmith Villa. So we welcome them and thank them very much for leading us with their spiritual guidance as this ceremony continues. And I invite for the scripture reading, Angelie Johnson. Morning, all. Just to set the record straight, I am not Angelie Johnson, I am Daisy Pedley. Uh, this morning's scripture reading, the first one is taken from Psalm 121. I will read a new follow, reading from the King James Version. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Hear the reading of God's word. Thanks be to God. I'm very sorry for using the wrong name, but I do apologize, but you corrected all of us. Dear friends, I made a big omission in the introductions. I did not introduce and welcome Minister Terrell. How could I do this? Because he was my traveling mate to the Commonwealth Games last year. Minister Terrell, thank you very much for joining us, and we welcome you along with the others. We'll now have a musical tribute by Elaine Lee. Good morning, all. I am here to say. 
celebrate my friend Simone. I met her when she was a guest on my radio show. And from she stepped into the studio, there was just a light. If you've ever been blessed to be around her, you feel her energy. It is electric. And I give thanks for that energy. And around the same time that I interviewed her, I released a song. And it was a song about the fact that I love God and I wanted to hold on to God, stick to God like glue. Well, Simone stuck to the song like glue. And Simone started posting it all over her Instagram page. She was dancing to it and singing it. And she would message me and say, no, man, I'll you have to sing more song like this, man. I love this. And so I want to sing this song in tribute to my dear friend, as well as a prayer. As we go through this time, it goes like this. Never ever felt this free before. to be wise. 
be careful because this is not a concert. But believe you me, that was so beautiful. So beautiful, Adeline. Thank you so much. Dear friends, we'll have another scripture reading, this time by a cousin, Katra Crooks, and this will be followed by a hymn. So may I invite now Ms. Crooks, to, who's a cousin, to come and do the other scripture reading. Good morning, everyone. This is the second scripture, and it will be taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doubt corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall change. For this incorruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Last scripture, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be he steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as he know that your labor is not in vain, in vain in the Lord. There goes the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. Amen. Another song of praise is Goodness of God, a song that has stirred so many hearts around the world invite you to stand with us as we sing this song. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. I lay my head, I lay my head 
trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding cause just shall wipe away all tears from mine eyes. Wave your hands and sing, just shall wipe away all tears from mine eyes. When I go to Zion, my dry worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't think it's the responsibility of the moderator to say anything. All I can say is incredible. Incredible. How can we not praise the Lord? Amen. Dear friends, we're going to have some spoken tributes now. But before doing that, allow me to just introduce two former presidents of the Jamaica Basketball Association. There's Ajani Williams and also Marlon Natty. Um, they're here with us and we need to recognize them as paying tribute to our dear friend, Simone. We're going to have a number of tributes. There are three printed on your program and there are two others. And they will do so in order. They will not be announced separately. We'll first have the president of the Jamaica Basketball Association, Mr. Paulton Gordon, and then two friends of, 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 of um, Simone. There is Manuelo uh, Marino and Vanessa Giddon. And then this will be followed by a presentation from the children from the Home Work Center. I need to explain, the Homework Center was a pet project of Simone's. This was in her community, and that is something that has a special relationship, and they're going to give a little presentation. Then we'll have Patsy Davis, and nobody has told me who Patsy Davis represents. I think she represents everybody in this room. Right? And then we will have from the directors of the Simone for Children Foundation. This was a foundation that was founded by Simone particularly for the benefit of children, and the directors and associates will be making a special, special presentation. Now, I invite them to come up in order, and I ask everyone to be considerate with time. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. The Jamaica basketball family would like to extend heartfelt condolences to the immediate and extended family of our sister, Simone Edwards. She's universally known as the Jamaican Hurricane. Like the rest of the basketball community, I know that her loss has left a void that is unexplainable and as such difficult to comprehend. Simone was a trailblazer who charted a course and paved the way for scores of young ladies who used their basketball talent to accomplish educational and professional goals. Her passion for children led her to establish the Simone for Children Foundation, which focused on providing educational support, mentoring and personal development opportunities for youth who are from the lower socioeconomic strata. Simone served her country well. After dabbling in track and field briefly in high school, um, she discovered basketball was the platform to unearth, to unearth her purpose in life. She discovered basketball and refused to let go. Her journey is well documented and littered with success at all levels, from high school to college and ultimately playing professionally in North America and in Europe. Simone did it all. The pinnacle of her playing career was winning the WNBA trophy in 2004 with Seattle Storm. She then plied her trade in Europe and thereafter ventured into coaching 
and was player coach for the Jamaican national women's team for a number of years. As was expected, she reaped success at the Caribbean level, winning trophies as a player and subsequently as the head coach for the team. Simone wanted to do more and wanted an avenue to further give back to her, to her country. In 2020, she was appointed the coordinator for national youth programs, um, basketball programs that is. She became more actively engaged in talent identification, fundraising, and even technical preparation of the teams. I remember in 2021, when even after being diagnosed and clearly not her usual self, Simone was at the training camps issuing instructions and providing guidance to the under-17 team, which was preparing for a regional tournament in Mexico. Her innate qualities of dedication, passion, and commitment were always known, but became acutely evident at that particular time. Simone, like most of us, was convinced that we have the talent base to be a top-ranked basketball nation in the Americas and ultimately glo globally. I would suggest a very good way to extend her legacy is to put all the necessary support systems in place to hone the raw talent we have in Jamaica and prepare our national teams for a good shot at qualifying for the 2028 Olympic Games. We can do it. We have lost a basketball icon and someone who has truly used her God-given talent for the betterment of humanity. We rest assured, however, that those we love will never leave, but become guardian angels as we navigate the game of life. As the saying goes, after the storm, there's always a calm. Rest well, Jamaican hurricane. Okay, um, my name is Manuela Gorin. I met Simone when the Consul General of Jamaica, Geneve Brown Metzger, introduced us at the track and field meet in New York where Usain Bolt was going to run. As interested as I was in Usain, I immediately was captivated by this young woman who was very passionate about getting together a national women basketball team. And you know, she had me at basketball. In a matter of months, we were organizing the team, getting them to come to Long Island, stay at my house in Belport, practice at a local school gym. We shared fun times, fun meals together, only to be continued in Jamaica when we were trying to get support from the government for this amazing team, who perhaps had a real shot at the Olympics in London. Simone and I were unstop an unstoppable duo at bugging people and getting them to donate money, uniforms, anything. One of the best stories is all of us going to Pier 1 for a fun night of dancing and partying, and my husband Jimmy taking all of us, the only man with him, a tickle pink Michael Weatherly, with about 12 women, most of which were well over six feet tall. Full disclosure, I was wearing my highest heels. Another great moment was all of us stuck in a school bus and going from Mobay to Kingston for a friendly match with the men's team and singing Lean On Me on top of our lungs in the bus. We stopped at a jerk stop on the road and some guy asked me, who were these really tall girls and was I their coach? I answered, no, no, I wasn't their coach, Simone was, I was their mother. Our story with the team didn't turn out exactly the way we would have wanted it, but we had so much fun trying. After the stint with the team that culminated in having everyone in, on red carpet looks at the American Friends of Jamaica Gala that I was chairing that year, Simone and I always kept in touch. By now we were like family. She enjoyed listening to my father playing Italian songs on the accordion. She enjoyed my mother's cooking. She was always laughing at Jimmy's jokes. She called him Shorty. 
and you know, and she was telling everyone that she was his bodyguard. One night during those Olympics that we could not go to, Usain Bolt, Usain Bolt had just won another of the gold medals, Shelly Ann Fraser Price had done the same, and we were out for pizza in Bellport, Long Island. We walked into a restaurant and Simone was wearing one of her Jamaican team collar shirts. Everyone looked at her and then they stood up and clapped. It was impossible not to love Simone, her energy, her smile, her drive, her generous attitude. She cared so much about the children she was helping, the old ladies she was coaching, and just about anyone that came in contact with her. I don't want to dwell on the hard times that she had lately because even in this horrible fight against a deadly disease, she had so much grace and so much strength. We spent together a few days at trial at the end of last November. It was close to her birthday and we celebrated. She was tired and achy, but she wanted to play pickleball with me. And as usual, she killed it, even in her weekend state. All the pro pros and the bold boys of trial wanted me to tell you how much it meant to them to see her and to play with her. After, we exchanged a phone call or two and texts on WhatsApp, and she told me how her latest scans were really not what she had hoped for. I told her that I'm not a praying kind of person, but if she wanted, I would definitely do it for her. And she said, ah, forget it. I don't need prayers. I need a miracle. I am so sorry that I couldn't give that to her. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Vanessa Giddon, and I'm also a member of the Jamaican national team. Whew. I was fortunate to have the opportunity to experience Simone in different chapters of her life. I met, I met Simi almost 20 years ago when she helped recruit me to play for the Jamaican national team. Now many years later, life made a full circle and I now was recruiting her to come work at the Nike World Headquarters as a part of the Women in Nike program. Simone worked this summer with the Seattle Storm, but as the season was winding down, I asked her, how do you feel about the possibility of working at Nike? <sighs> she was open to it, but I knew the interview process had just wrapped up. <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> I said, okay. I will put your name in next year, and I will make sure that you're in the next round. What I didn't know is that God had another plan. A few weeks later, the director told me that there was two spots open, and we were looking to fill those positions immediately. Of course, you know, I went ahead and told her about Simone. Simone landed an interview with Claire Hamill who was essentially the cornerstone of the Women in Nike program. Simone said to me, Van, what do I need to know about this interview process? I said, Simi, just go in there and be yourself. She said, well, so, so said, so done. Simi called me after the interview and she said, Van, I love Claire. We had such a great conversation. I was thinking to myself, didn't you have an interview? She said, yeah, but the conversation was so good. I had a similar feedback from Claire. <sighs> Simi had a special gift. And it's, <sighs> sorry. Simi had a special gift. And soon, Nike was able to experience that. She landed the job as an associate product line manager. Surely, with more time, we would have called her Vice President Simi. So before I get into the tributes from some key, key people in Nike, yeah, sorry. 
I will start by saying, <sighs> Nike, I would, like, I would like to use this time to thank you and the team for open up, opening up this opportunity for my sister Simi to be a part of the team. Given her medical condition, you could have turned her down, but instead you led with unbiased intent and saw the true value. You added a glimpse of joy to some of the hardest moments in her life. And for that, we thank you. Michael Splain, Claire Hamill, Jeanette Melgar Mel Melgaro, Brian Ikwe, Brian, Brianna Ray, thank you all. Starting with a few tributes from some teammates at Nike. First up, Shell Thompson, former Seattle Storm teammate and also Nike teammate. To know Simi was to know was it was one's life's was life's pleasure. To love, sorry, to be loved by her, one's greatest gift. Her courage, strength, generosity, kind, compassion, soul were some of the many things I admired about her. I've never met anyone like Simone. Her legacy has forever left an imprint on my heart. She was the big sister I never had, the best friend I knew I could always depend on. And I will miss her beyond words. I love you, Simi. Brian. Ikwe, her Nike manager. <laughs> like every team Simone was ever on, she made everyone around her better. That was also true in her most recent endeavor, which was, was working at the Nike headquarter. The team she worked on at Nike knew her, didn't know her for her basketball fame but rather as a person that everyone on the team wanted advice from. The team was even fighting over where she would sit in the office because everyone wanted her to sit beside them. Her knowledge for team leadership and her natural wisdom translate to the business world seamlessly and she made everyone on the team better in such a short period of time. Simone even consoled the team when a team, team member passed away last fall. She told them, don't let the grief get in the way of seeing the joy from your, your friends. The joy Simone brought Nike was bright and that will continue to shine through the people that were lucky enough to experience all that was great about her. Lastly, the WIND program director, Jeanette Magarejo. Simone was a beloved member of our global express lane team as an associate product line manager and a woman in Nike fellow. She was a bright light to all those around her. Simone brightened, up, brightened any room she entered and gave hope to those fighting their own battles. We will all remember her beautiful smile, immense joy, energy, tender heart. We are all lucky to have been able to be blessed by her presence for such a short time, for the short time we had. She will be missed greatly. On behalf of myself and the entire team at Nike, we send our deepest condolences to the Edwards family. I leave you with one of my favorite quote from Simi. The premise of my life story is persevering despite obstacles after obstacles. 
that defines being unstoppable. Simi, you are forever unstoppable. Your legacy will live on forever. We love you. Now, if you turn your way to the screen, this is how we will remember Simi. Whilst we're waiting for the other tribute to come up from the children from the homework centre, my dear friends, that was a clear demonstration of the synergy between Simone and her teammates. You couldn't want a better description of that relationship. I'm sure you agree with me. We want to thank them for showing what Simone was like among the team. That was a clear demonstration. We now welcome the children from the Homework Centre. If you give a little more than you take If you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you 
If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved, there's a place for people like you. I've heard up there the streets are made of gold. And when you get there, there's a hand to hold. a place for people like you. Yes, that was beautiful. A beautiful thought, beautiful singing. Be beautiful legacy. They can have the memories of how she impacted their lives, how she impacted all our lives. She made a difference and we give God thanks. And it's a message for us who are still here to live in a way to impact others around us. The next song of praise is you raise me up. The offering will be taken at this time in aid of the Simone Four Children Foundation. Someone, will, persons will be going around to make a collection at this time.
give thanks. Father, we thank you for the offering that has been collected in aid of Simone for Children Foundation. Father, we pray you multiply it. We pray that lives will be transformed. We pray that, Lord, her legacy will continue as she invests in the lives of these young children. So, Father, we pray your blessing upon this offering as we give you thanks. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, it's our morning. Good morning, everyone. Minister. Honorable Minister Grange, Honorable Minister Terrellon, um, Simone Goodfriends, Mike, and the Gorins, the Brazilian Ambassador, 
I just want to speak with my players that traveled with Simone along the national female basketball journey. <clears throat> my voice is cracking. Simone was an excellent player coach. I consider myself being privileged to have worked closely with Moni. Yes, Moni was my special name for my special friend. So much is going to be said this morning, and all of it will be well-deserved, because Simone was, was such excellent talent. Time will not permit to say all I would have to say, so I will just give you a few examples of moments we shared on the court along with the players behind me. As the manager of the Jamaica female national basketball team for many years, I truly loved watching her play. Basketball wasn't just a sport for morning, but a form of art. Watching her play on the court was like watching an artist at work. As the captain of the team, she displayed very good leadership qualities, so the team always get the best results from, from her. She knew how to inspire them and to play their best. As a player for herself, she never missed a layup. She was also an excellent rebounder. In 2007, the Jamaica national basketball team won the Caribbean Championship here in Jamaica. We made history by being the first English-speaking country to play in central basketball, which was held in Mexico. At the game, we qualified to play in the semifinals with Puerto Rico. With two minutes left in the game, Puerto Rico was up by one point. Simone was on the bench. She asked the coach to put her on because she knew they would foul her. So said, so done. We won the game by one point. History was again made by being the first English-speaking Caribbean country to participate in FIBA American tournament. We played in central basketball three times, three times in CAC game, once in Panam game, and once in FIBA America last leg qualifier for the Olympic in Colombia. At this tournament, Simone got the trophy for scoring the most points. This was the type of player Simone was. After retirement, she moved to the United States. Simone coached a team of seniors over the age of 70 years old. They entered a senior tournament and won the bronze medal. Simone was a coach of all ages. I will miss you. I will miss you, morning. I will miss your calls. I will miss how you tell me how you love me. And I would say, no, morning, I love you more. She would say, no, sir, me taller than you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. All protocol observed. My name is Keisha Lindsay, and I'm the secretary for the Simone for Children Foundation. Simone Anne Marie Edwards, born on November 17, 1973, to parents, Mama Burrell and Aston Edwards. Grew up in a community named Gola, or as we would say, Goldsmith Villa, in the August town. Simi, or Sis, as I affectionately call her, was very jovial and full of life. 
Simi was a fighter, and the name Jamaican Hurricane was truly who she was. Resilient, go-getter, fighter, and a true believer in anything she sets out to do. She lived her life unapologetically, on her terms. She had an inner light, which shone brightly and drew persons to her, regardless of social stature. She loved fiercely and was very protective of those she considered family. For her family wasn't merely someone connected to her by blood, but more so by deeds and presence. Her heart and her biggest asset and her larger than life persona and infectious smile permeated every room, gym, and space that was blessed to her. Sorry, that was blessed to have her. She radiated joy and confidence in most situations. She excelled at her craft, both locally and internationally, and her energy and enthusiasm spurred her teammates through many battles on the court. Her impact on local basketball will go down in the annals of the sport history. In 2010, Simi called myself and Patsy and spoke to us about starting her foundation, Simone for Children, or for short, S4C, here in Jamaica. And the only question I asked her was, what you wanted me to do? She replied to say, just be the secretary. You are going to do the work anyway. It was a done deal. We started the foundation in 2011 and never looked back. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Trevor Poyser. Uh, Simone and I work together with the junior national team as the head coach, development coordinator, and I'm also now the vice chair of the Simone for Children Foundation. Come, Trevor, you're the man. Simone is a stalwart, an icon, and a legend. Simone is the epitome of strength, courage, determination, selflessness, and most of all, humility. During our many conversations about basketball, life's challenges, and speaking about her foundation, she always, always put people first. She would always be saying, Trev, Trev, I need this for the children. Trev, Trev, I need this for the players. And we would go out and we'd do it together. Most people will talk about dreams and how they can attain their dreams and things that they want to achieve in life. Simone rarely used the word dreams. The only time she'd use the word dream was when she talked about her dream vehicle, her Mercedes-Benz. Everything else to Simone was a goal, and she made everything reality. Ms. B, thank you for Simone. Mr. Edwards, thank you for Simone. So I want to say to everyone here, she will be missed. She will be missed. Hi, good morning all. I'm Anjali Latush Johnson. I'm a friend. She was my coach. She was my teammate. I was also the accountant for SVC. Um, my tribute today, I will read as a letter to Simone. Okay. Yeah. Dear Simone, mm -hmm. on the evening of Thursday, February the 16th, I received a call that evoked a gut-wrenching pain that I will never forget. I was celebrating my birthday while you were departing, and I was overwhelmed with guilt and sadness. How could I have been so happy? while you were taking your last breath. I was attending college in Tallahassee, Florida, when we spoke, when we first spoke. 
you were excited about your new role at Radford University and wanted me to be your very first recruit. I can still hear you saying, wouldn't it be awesome if a Jamaican coach recruited a Jamaican player as a very first recruit? Your patriotism had no end. Opportunities grew and we ended up at George Mason University and never looked back. The fact that you are no longer here is so unreal. I could stand here today and speak of your life facts. Like the day you were born, your family, your mom, Miss Beryl, who meant the world to you. Your historical contributions to Jamaica and basketball. Your double NBA championship with Seattle Storm. Your nonprofit organization called Simone for Children. Your girls' empowerment movement called Girls on Tap and even the Order of Distinction awarded to you. However, you have done so much good that it cannot merely be summarized in a paragraph. You have positively impacted so many lives that I cannot begin to express our sincere gratitude. You have brought so much goodness to this world with your passion and drive, how can I, try to summarize a life that is so impactful. You were a gift to everyone, energetic and filled with happiness. A great athlete with the most magnetic spirit and a contagious enthusiasm. But it's your life off the court that is cherished the most. The way you used your platform for the good magnifies your altruistic personality. Your passion for women's empowerment is beyond this world. Simone, you were beyond this world. Your optimism, but not to mention that broad smile, the way you never made sadness linger, is what I admired the most about you. You were a warrior. You fought in all arenas and still found a way to smile through it all. With your passing, you are leaving behind a legacy of kindness, compassion, and generosity. When times were difficult, you held your head high until the end, showing what it looks like to finish strong. There is a quote by Maya Angelou that best describes you. Simone and Marie Edwards, it says, precious jewel, you glowed, you shone, reflecting all the good things in this world. Sleep well, dear Simi, you were unstoppable. We will have now have a musical presentation by Kemar. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. I pray that this song will minister to your heart and will encourage you this morning. Amen.
for that wonderful tribute. Dear friends, I now invite our Honourable Minister, Her Excellency, the Honourable Olivia Grange, to bring her tribute. And may I just say, following that, we will have the homily by Pastor Dr. De Goots, then the prayer for the family by Elderly Roy Stamp, and the final commendation and farewell. That will flow in that order. Honourable Minister. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. I must first say that this morning we are celebrating Simone. Yes. This is a celebration. Yes. If you notice the program, yes. we do not have the traditional hymns. Yes. We have the praise and worship songs. This is Simone. Yes. We must celebrate her life. Right. We must not mourn her passing, but celebrate her life and give God, give God thanks. Yeah, right. Everyone in this room this morning, in this auditorium, and everyone who has contributed to putting this program together, and everyone who has contributed to the decor and everything, have done it with love and appreciation for Simone. Yes. This really is a special, very special occasion. So I want to acknowledge first Simone's parents, Miss Beryl and Mr. Aston. And I'm really happy to see how you keep up and you have given Simone support over the years. I'm sorry Minister Bartlett had to leave because in uh, Simone's early age, he was her member of parliament. And he was here this morning 
because he wanted to show his love and respect. Unfortunately, he had another appointment at 4.11.30 and had to leave before the end of this celebration. But I just want you all to know that he was very much a part of Simone's early development. I want to also acknowledge Honorable Landa Terrellong, Minister of State in my ministry, and also Her Excellency Moriero Marcelino, the Brazilian ambassador to Jamaica. There are some individuals here this morning who have journeyed from rural Jamaica, who are Simone's friends, and I really want to specially acknowledge them this morning. That's Mike Dracolidge, CEO of Mystic Mountain, and Jimmy and Manuela Goren, who are here this morning. I also wish to acknowledge the president, is he still here, of the JOA? And Mr. Paulton Gordon, president of the Jamaica Basketball Association and members of the basketball fraternity. I also wish to acknowledge past presidents of the Jamaica Basketball Association, Johnny Williams and Marlon Natty. And during Ajani's um, tenure as president, I, I worked very closely with, um, with Simone. Of course, I also wish to acknowledge Paula Sertes, Managing Director of Island Coffees, that is responsible for Simone's coffee brand, Jamaican Hurricane. I'm also acknowledging all specially invited persons and all those who are here this morning because you love and care for Simone. Of course, I have to say to Patsy and the, the team that we know your love for Simone and we know it's going to take a long time for you to overcome this. The pages of sports history must record that Simone Edwards was one of the exceptional athletes produced by Jamaica. Not only, not only did she stand tall physically, she reached amazing heights in women's basketball locally and internationally. Not only was Simone a tower of strength on basketball courts in Europe, Israel, and the United States, but she sought to strengthen in many ways those around her. She was kind, very kind, and a very giving person. Simone was the perfect example of one who refused to allow her humble beginnings to prevent her from becoming the star that she set out to be. I mean, just the, the, the video clip of her dancing and, and just having fun, you know, I don't think there was a Jamaican dance move that Simone couldn't do. Simone and I shared a special relationship. We kept in touch from the early days when she played on the national team. Not only did I provide financial assistance to the Jamaica women's basketball team, which she captained and coached at times, I even organized a photo shoot with a fashion photographer, which projected the players as models. Unfortunately, I was not able to publish that book, but I think we're going to, I'm going to go back to those photographs because those set of ladies were really very special. I'm going to go back to those photographs, and we're going to do that publication in tribute to Simone. <laughs> you can't want more beautiful ladies than these tall, outstanding basketball women. And we're going to do that publication in your honor, your, and Simone's honor. So Simone stayed in touch with me during her, her illness. And I tried to be as supportive as I could be. Maybe I, being busy, I wasn't able to spend enough time. But I would communicate with Simone through Patsy and through my daughter, Paula, 
because of Simone's coffee brand. In fact, it was after Simone was diagnosed that she presented me with a copy of the book she authored, Unstoppable, a memoir of adversity, perseverance, and triumph. And this book epitomizes the person. From the inner city community of Augustown in St. Andrew, which we also call Kingston, to the Seattle Storm women's basketball team in the United States, and a Women's National Basketball Association championship in the year 2004. Simone was a member of the inaugural Seattle Storm team and the first Caribbean or the first Jamaican player to play in that league. On retirement in 2006, she was the Seattle Storm all-time leader in rebounds, minutes, and games played. And we should applaud her for that. Simone was regarded as the perpetual fan favorite during her time with the Storm. She had gained prominence representing teams in Italy, Hungary, Spain, and in Israel, leading them to championships, including the Spanish Copa de la Reina and the Israeli Cup. A calm did not exactly come after the storm upon her retirement, because Simone became very involved in Jamaican and Caribbean women's basketball following her time at the storm. Simone really didn't know how to remain calm. She always had to be involved in something, and she was like a hurricane. If she wants something done, she does not stop. She will move mountains to get what she had to get done. I remember many calls from Simone, Minister, we have to get the money to do this. We have to, sometimes the team, they're out there somewhere and they don't have enough per diem or they don't have, you know the struggles. But Simone, she would call and she would push and she would say, we have to get this done. And I must say to the Jamaica Basketball Association, I don't know what you're going to do without Simone, but I'm hoping that one of the other women will step up to the plate and make sure that women basketball in Jamaica survive and thrive. We cannot depend on the men in Java. Women, you have to step up to the plate. And I'm challenging your president to make sure that happens. So under Simone's captaincy, the Jamaica women won the Caribbean basketball tournament for the first time. Always determined that she would give back, Simone founded the Simone for Children Foundation. Her intention was to provide educational support, including school supplies, social skills, scholarships, financial assistance, clothing, and mentoring. And I'm asking all of you here to just continue to give that foundation the support it requires in order to ensure Simone's legacy continues. In 2021, Simone assisted in the coaching of our under-17 boys team for a tournament in Mexico. Funds for the players' camp were raised through the Simone for Children Foundation. The Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, my ministry also assisted with the airfares. Simone Edwards was a star player, but a huge part of her legacy will be her willingness to help, will be her willingness to help the advancement of others. That was what was so great about Simone, and that should be her legacy. She was a patriot who accomplished much, but never forgot her homeland, her roots, passionate, passionate about Jamaica. She has been quoted as saying that after all, she's just a little girl from Kingston, Jamaica. In recognition of her indelible impact on women's basketball, the government accorded her national honors. I was happy to have been the minister at that time. 
and she was accorded order of distinction, officer class. And I was so proud of her accomplishments and I still am very proud. Simone, <laughs> Simone Hurricane Edwards, at Storm and on many other courts, she blew teams away, but she was a friend of many and many will join us here in Jamaica as we celebrate her legacy. I want to express my deepest condolences to her mother, her father, her relatives, other relatives, friends, former team members, the Jamaica Basketball Association, and to the basketball fans everywhere. And as I close, I just want to say that tomorrow is not promised to anyone. And Simone will tell you that. So you must remember that what you do today is important. If you care about somebody, tell them today. Don't wait until tomorrow, because it's not promised to you. And if you have a problem with somebody, try to sort it out today, because tomorrow is not promised to you. Yeah. And if you want to tell somebody you love them, tell them no, because tomorrow is not promised to you. And I called Simone's mother, I think it was Friday night, very late. I apologize for calling you so late. But in finalizing this book, I don't call it a program, I said, what was Simone's favorite song? What was Simone's favorite hymn? And she said to me, take me to the king. She said, Simone loved that, and Simone always, always sing that song. And so that will be a recessional hymn. But I just wanted to quote a couple sections from that song. Take me to the king, I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces, it's my offering. Take me to the king. Truth is I'm tired, options are few. I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm all churched out, hurt and abused. I can't fake what's left to do. Truth is, I'm weak, no strength to fight, no tears to cry, even if I tried, but still my soul refuses to die. One touch will change my life. Lay me at the throne, leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory and sing to you this song. Take me to the king, take me to the king, take me to the king. Love and respect, Simone. May the angels have their arms wide stretch to welcome you home as we take you to the king. God bless you all. As we continue to celebrate the life of Simone, all protocol observed. For a few minutes, I just want to challenge and to encourage all of us who have gathered here this morning to celebrate the life of Simone. Each time we have an opportunity to celebrate the life of an individual, it is also an opportunity for us to reflect on our own lives and how we live that life. Yeah. And so I want to encourage us 
from the book of Isaiah, and I particularly want to share one verse of scripture with you, Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. When you reflect on the life of Simone in terms of how she persevered in spite of her humble beginning, in spite of her illness, how can one persevere? How can one move forward, fulfilling their purpose, not focusing on themselves, but on others? How do you lift up others even when you are going through your own challenges. I would want to submit to you this afternoon that a relationship with a covenant-keeping God through his son Jesus is the perfect way to be able to live your life, to pursue your goals, fulfill your purpose, in spite of life, various challenges. And so when we read in Isaiah chapter 41, it opens with God summoning the nations of the world. And I see that as a God who is sovereign, one who is omnipotent, all-powerful, omnipresent, everywhere, omniscient, all-knowing, and more than even that, he is eternal, no end, no beginning. And as the prophet would outline the covenant-keeping God, he took time out to mention or to reflect upon his covenant relationship with Israel. He said, Israel, you are my servant. Jacob, I have chosen you seed of Abraham, my friend. And so as we reflect on this covenant relationship, it was sending a message to the children of Israel that although you are in exile, although you feel forgotten, I want to assure you that because of this covenant relationship I have with you, you are able to survive. I will do for you what no other I've done. I'll bring you back to your nation like no other had ever done before. And so when we go into verse 41, I want to share a couple of things that is essential that I believe that when you have this covenant relationship with God, and this can be established through his son Jesus, there are a couple of things that we can be assured of. And so the text started, fear thou not, for I am with you. And here that is saying that when you establish that covenant relationship with him, his presence is with you. And so he said, fear not. So in spite of life challenges, and as the minister said, life is uncertain. You do not know what will happen tomorrow. And here the Lord was reassuring his people, and I want to reassure all of us who are here, that when you establish, have that relationship with his covenant-keeping God, his presence is always with you. He said, fear thou not, for I am with you. In spite of life storms and difficulties, sickness and other obstacles that will face an individual in their course of life. He gives this assurance, fear thou not, because I am with you. Do not be terrified, because I am with you. But the critical thing is that that relationship needs to be established. And so you can have that assurance that you need not fear tomorrow. Regardless of what will come, you need not fear because God is with you. The all-powerful God is with you. But secondly, when you establish this relationship with him, 
His relationship with you is secure. Hear what the text says. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. Personal, I am your God. When that relationship is established, you can say, it's my God. And so we say, my daddy. Because there is that link and that relationship is secure. And so the text says, do not be dismayed. Don't be bewildered by life challenges. Don't give up on your dream. Don't give up on your purpose because of the obstacles that may come your way. Like Simone, in spite of her challenges, in spite of her difficulties, she was able to focus on others. She was able to invest in others, not focusing on herself, but wanted to live in such a way that others will be lifted up others will be able to fulfill their own purpose. And I believe no greater person is able to stand with you so that regardless of what life will throw at you, you will not throw up hands, you will not give up on life, you will not give up on your purpose, but you are able to persevere and to fulfill God-given purpose for your life. But not only that a relationship with him is secure by having that covenant relationship, but his support for you is certain. It is guaranteed. And hear what the text says. And three things the text highlighted in terms of this covenant keeping God will give you his support. He said, I will strengthen you. So in your weakness, in your moment, when you feel like you are not able to make it, this covenant keeping God, he said, I will strengthen you. I will give you the courage. And even as you go through your time of grief now, he is saying to you, I will strengthen you. I will be there for you. I am able to carry you through this. You do not have to give up in spite of your own weakness. But it didn't stop there. He also said, I will help you. So when you feel helpless, when you feel like there is no way out, the covenant keeping God is saying, if you have that relationship with me, I will help you. I will be there for you in your time of weakness. I will support you. I will give you the aid that you need to accomplish your purpose, to accomplish your task, to be able to look beyond yourself as Simone did and pour into the life of others that even after you have gone from the scene, the legacy, the impact that you would have made in the life of others will continue to live on. Amen. But it didn't stop there. He said, yes, also, I will uphold you. When your legs feel like they are giving way, the God who is this covenant-keeping God says, I'll support you. I will sustain you. I will hold you up so you can stand tall, so you can stand firm, so you can hold up on the pressure because I am able to. I am the God who nothing is impossible to him. And so I want to challenge and encourage all of us gather here today that this covenant non-keeping God a relationship with him can be established through his son, Jesus. And he guarantees that if you establish this relationship with him, his presence will be with you. The relationship with him is secure. He will not abandon you regardless. He loves you too much to abandon you. His support is certain. 
He will strengthen you. He will help you. He will uphold you. And so at the end of it, when you look back over your life, you can see the hand of God in you, working through you, so that when it shall come to the end of your sojourn, when you meet him face to face, you can hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And so let me just quickly pray with all of us gather here in a little while. Elder will come and pray for the family. It's good for someone to pray for you, but what God desires most of all is that you can pray for yourself. And when you have that relationship with him, you have access to him and you can approach him anytime. He will never be too busy to hear you or to reach out to help you. Let us pray. Father, we commit your people to you. We thank you for the life of Simone and how she persevered in spite of her illness, in spite of obstacles, in spite of challenges, in spite of her humble beginning to be the person that we are here to celebrate her life. Father, we pray that you minister to each heart here today. That, Lord, each of and every one of us, we are special. You created us unique. There is a purpose in all of us. And, Lord, in spite of the various challenges that we face, a covenant relationship with you can aid us, can help us to accomplish that which you have deposited in us. And so, Lord, we pray that something from your word, even this one verse of scripture, would resonate in the heart of someone who may be thinking that I cannot make it. What if this same situation should confront me? Will I be able to make it? I pray that you open their understanding, cause them to come to that place where they'll put their trust in you and allow you to work in them so that their purpose that you have deposited can be realized. So breathe upon your people even now as we commit them to you and we give you thanks. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. This time we asked everyone to stand except for the family members. You will remain seated as we pray. Let us pray. O oh, great God, mighty Father, today we are here, Lord, in this Thanksgiving service for our dear sister. We place the family before you, Lord. You have given them this gift, and the gift would have served many individuals, not only in Jamaica, but in the world. We thank you, Lord, for the family. And we pray, Lord, a special blessing upon their lives. Indeed, Lord, we know that you are able because you, Lord, would have given them this gift. Although, Lord, they would have lost the gift, Lord, yet we are here celebrating the life. And so, mighty Father, we pray, O oh God, that you will strengthen them in this hour. Because even when they leave here, they will not have the crowd to be with. At that time, Lord, we pray for comfort. We pray for strength. We pray, O oh God, that you be near to them, O oh mighty one of Israel. May they find strength in you. May they find resilience in you, knowing, Lord, that you are able, because you have said, Lord, that he who called Israel neither slumber nor sleep. And so we place them into your hands. May you continue to bless, guide, protect, and provide for, and keep. And finally, Lord, 
save them in your kingdom we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ amen You may be seated. We have gathered here today to commit to rest the remain of a loved one, friend, Simone. Here is the form of one whose memory we have treasured. Some of, us have, some of us have shared through these passing years a wonderful companionship with Simone. Let us cherish the many memories that comes to us at this time. And let each and every one of us here purpose to seek the Lord with all our hearts. And let us make use of the opportunity of salvation extended to us through his grace. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world unto himself the soul of our sister Simone, we hereby Therefore, commit a remain to the elements it rest in place, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Could I invite you to stand for the benediction, and then we will have the recessional song. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Before we have the recessional song, may I once again say on behalf of the organizers, that we really appreciate your attendance here today. We want to thank all those who participated, the clergy and everyone who participated. We want to thank those who joined us via internet and a whole host of other people. This is greatly appreciated. We've attempted to say farewell to Simone to celebrate her life. As we say farewell to her from her earthly pilgrimage. Let us assure her that we did this with love, admiration, and enough respect. There has been an outpouring of love for Simone here this morning. It's just a small glimpse of our respect for her. But it was done with sincerity and love. I thank you all for being a part of this memorable occasion. And as we sing the, the recessional song, I'm going to invite the parents to again come and take the ashes out, which will be led by our pastor and the other clergy. At the end of the recessional song, you're all invited to share some refreshments just across the court there with everyone. Thank you again. And we'll now have the recessional song.
For those who wish to take photographs, we're going to leave the screen up. You can come to the stage in case you want to have the backdrop to take some photographs.